And there's a new book out that you're going to want to check out. It's by Senator Bernie Sanders. It's called Our Revolution. I have read about two-thirds of it already. It is brilliant. And by the way, the author's on the line with us. Senator Sanders, welcome back to the program. Hey, Tom, it is great to be with you. It is so great to have you with us. Uh, congratulations on your elevation to a Senate leadership post. I just saw the news release this morning. Um, it is. And let uh, me just say this, and I often say it, Tom. You know, I've been around the country a lot in the last couple of years, and there are very few places that I go where people don't say, hey, I heard you on the Tom Hartman show. So in a world where a handful of corporations dominate what we see, hear, and read, uh, you are doing a great job, and I just want to thank you for all of that. Well, thank you so much, Senator. I, I, uh, it's, it's always been an honor and a pleasure to, to have you on our program. So uh, what? we just have 10 minutes here. This is, by the way, for our listeners and viewers, this is not a brunch with Bernie hour. This is Bernie is on as a guest. He's got a million things to do. Um, uh, and, you know, so uh, what, in your opinion, are the top issues? What are the things that you want to say to our listeners and viewers right now? Look, I, these are very tough and frightening times, and people are very, very upset. So here are just the things that I want to say. Number one, uh, Hillary Clinton got, I think, was, what, two million more votes than Donald Trump got. Uh, number two, uh, on virtually every important issue, uh, the Republican Party's views are the minority. Uh, our views are the majority. Number three, it is not acceptable for people to throw their hands up in despair, but it become demoralized. The stakes are too high. Uh, we have to fight uh, to make sure that uh, we will not allow racist or sexist or xenophobic activities to take place. And I'm confident that if millions of people stand up and fight back, we're going to win this thing. Uh, second of all, we have to do a lot of thinking, and nobody has the magical solution to this or the magical analysis. Why Trump won? But I'll tell you what I think, and you know, I don't know how many people will agree with me or not, but you got a guy, very unconventional, who comes forward and says, you know, I hear the pain of working Americans. I hear and understand that people are working two or three jobs, or they're seeing their jobs going to China, or that people are getting old and they are scared to death because they have nothing in the bank when they reach retirement. Or maybe you're a mom out there who's making thirty or forty thousand dollars a year and you're paying fifteen thousand for childcare. And that doesn't work, or you can't afford your prescription drugs. I hear you, says Donald Trump. Well, you know, between you and me, I think he is a great entertainer. I think he's a instinctually knows what people wants to hear. Our job right now, and we're researching this, is we are going to hold him accountable for every word that he said. He said that he was going to protect Social Security and Medicare. Well, you know what? We're going to demand and bring millions of people together to demand that he does that. He said he wants a new trade policy. Well, we're going to work with him on a trade policy which does not represent the needs of Wall Street or the drug companies, but represents the needs of working Americans. But bottom line is uh, we are going to present an agenda uh, that works for working families, for low-income people, uh, for uh, people living in poverty. Uh, and we are going to fight to bring about that agenda. And Second of all, we are going to mobilize people to oppose any and all efforts uh, against racist or sexist or homophobic uh, or xenophobic uh, policies. Yeah. Where do you see the Trump administration? It's so weird to even say these words. Um, where do you see them going and what do you think are the major, the first battles that are going to have to be fought? I see in the New York Times today they're talking about uh, overturning and I, and I, uh, I have a friend who, uh, a right-wing talk show host, who says Heritage has a list now of a thousand regulations that they're going to strike down in the first day. Uh, that you know, many were executive orders, others were you know within uh, departments, uh, you know within cabinet uh, departments that they can just simply strike down uh, by fiat, from vi environmental right. stuff to banking right. stuff, et cetera. Well, I'll tell you something, Tom. Where we look, I mean, this administration, and not just Trump, but whether it's the Heritage Foundation or any of the other right-wing groups, uh, we're going to have to mobilize millions of people in opposition. But at the top of my list of real fear is the issue of climate change. I mean, you've got a, a guy who's going to walk into the White House, unless his mind is changed, who actually believes that climate change is a hoax, uh, who does not... Un and, and here's the danger. If we, if we move in the direction in this country 
of more fossil fuel, which is what he campaigned on, if we move in the direction of believing climate change is a hoax, you're sending a message to every major country on Earth, to China, to Russia, to India, to all the other countries, that you don't have to worry about climate change. You shouldn't do it. The United States is not going to transform its energy system. We're not going to move away from fossil fuel. We're not going to move to energy efficiency or sustainable energy. And I, if that happens, uh, you know, somebody who is the grandfather of seven beautiful kids, I, I just worry so much about the future of the planet. And we have got to mobilize millions of people to stop the pipelines, to demand that we create jobs by transforming our energy system. So that's an issue that's right up there yeah. and that concerns me deeply. The title of your book is Our Revolution. It's also the organization that that you uh, spawned. I, I don't know what the right word is. Right. Um, uh, uh, tell us about Our Revolution, both the book and the organization, and your and just your idea of the concept, which you campaigned so, so brilliantly on. Look, what we have to do and what my campaign was about was transforming America economically, politically, environmentally, racially, socially. And what our revolution, the organization, is about is encouraging people to get involved in politics. That in your community, we need you to run for school board. We need you to run for city council. We need you to run for the state legislature. Uh, I am, by law, not able to be involved in the day-to-day -day activities of our revolution. But I can tell you that our revolution supported uh, over 100 candidates from school board to the United States Senate. A great many of them won, including some really, really great progressives at every level of government. So the message has got to go out that get involved. Yes, you know, you, I know a lot of people say, what, me running for city council? Me running for school board? Well, you know, I don't know enough. I don't have enough confidence in myself. Trust me, I'm a member of the United States Senate. You can run for school board. You can run for the city council. You don't have to be a genius or know every bloody thing to get involved. So I hope people do that. Uh, so what, that's what our revolution, the organization, is. What the book is about is two things. It talks about the campaign, how we started uh, as a quote-unquote fringe candidacy. We ended up getting 13-plus million votes, uh, 21, 22 states, uh, and ended up winning you know, vast majority of young people's votes in the Democratic process, primary. Uh, it also, Tom, the second half of the book is very clear. It talks about the real issues facing our country. I mean, one of the dismal things of many that the corporate media does is make politics look like it's a personality contest. It is not a personality contest. It is about looking at the real problems that we face and how we address them. And the book does that. At some length, it talks about the need to fight oligarchy, to talk about how we fight income and wealth inequality. How do we create a health care system that works for all people? How do we transform our energy system? What do we do? about immigration reform or, or criminal justice reform? How do we take care of the most vulnerable people in our country? How do we make public colleges and universities tuition free? How do we create an economy that works for all and not just the 1%? So it goes into some specifics in there. And I think those are the kinds of discussions. I think you know people will read it, they'll agree, they'll disagree. But that is the kind of discussion I think we need uh, to have in this, in this country. Absolutely. Senator, I know that you've got to run, but uh, thank you again so much for dropping by today and for all the years that you've been with us and for most importantly for the incredibly brilliant work that you've been doing both in the House and the Senate all these years. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you very much, Tom. Take care. Bye-bye. Great talking with you, Senator. We'll be back.